in Greetings YouTube. Today we're looking at the map that changed the world, um, William Smith and the Birth of Modern Geology by Simon Winchester. I find it interesting that Simon Winchester wanted his name at the top before the title. Um, now, Simon Winchester is the uh, author of Professor and the Madman, which is an excellent book, which I was not aware that he had written when I purchased this, and Krakatoa, uh, or Krakatoa, A Crack in the Edge of the World, um, which is also a book I think is excellent and have read and was completely unaware that he had written. So apparently I am attracted to the same topics that um, Mr. Winchester writes about. Now, this is a love letter to William Smith. Unabashedly, the author loves this dude. Partly, I think, because he grew up around some of the same stomping grounds that mm, Smith himself visited and used as research um, areas for his theories about geology. Um, specifically, uh, Smith was one of the first people to really truly articulate and map out through personal exploration and study how the geologic layers are laid down within the British Isles. So that you like you, this is what you're going to have on this stone is going to be of, of this stone and this stone is going to be of this stone. And you can tell which stone is above which stone by different types of fossils you're going to find and things like that. And he did a very thorough job of doing something no one had ever done before. And in the process, he made a map of uh, England, Wales, and I think a little bit of Scotland that for the first time showed people, if you've got this kind of rock formation here in this layering pattern, you're going to find coal here. I can guarantee you because these types of formations are going to be above the type of thing that you are looking for. So he created a map and a mental framework for finding things other than just locking onto them. He did the research and he created an exquisite map um, of his own creation that is still viewable today. I mean, he, you can go out there and you can look at the maps that were printed and then hand colored by him that are out there. There's still There are still a few of them extant and available for viewing. Um, and it, the most marvelous thing about this is that he was not born into an educated class. He was the son of a blacksmith. And he is almost exclusively self-educated. And yet he was a genius. And he self-taught everything he needed to know. And his drive, his fascination for the world was such that he became world famous, even though in the process over the course of his life, he ran up against classism again and again and again. And was his work was stolen repeatedly because he wasn't considered of the, of the proper class. His work was downgraded. Um, and it wasn't until he was in his uh, twilight years that he really achieved the accolades that he deserved for the contribution he made both to uh, cartography and to the, you know, the British Empire, but also to the very concept of, of the foundations of geology. I mean, this dude is the first person to really apply scientific thinking to geology, thinking that wasn't laid down by th uh, theology. There's too much of, uh, that the what passed for geology at the time was based at best maybe on works of the Greek and, and Greeks and uh, more likely based on biblical concepts, which of course were not going to be all that useful for tracking down and finding uh, deposits of iron or coal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and the trials and tribulations this man went through were vast. He was also, and I've I've, I've encountered this again and again and again. It seems as though. Some people who are geniuses at one thing are horrible at something else, and they all seem to be horrible at business because Smith was horrible at business. He made bad business decisions again and again, got himself into debt, and actually went to debtor's prison. Now, interestingly, this is the first time I've ever looked at debtor's prison in detail. I mean, the concept has always existed in my head, 
I think I was first introduced to it by like, you know, Dickens. Um, but I never really looked into it. And the idea being that essentially your creditors, the people that you owe money to, could have you arrested by a private institution and stuck into a cell as collateral. They seized you as a human being as collateral. And then they went through and sold all your personal possessions until they felt they had made back their, their money. And when they did, they then, they, 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 then you would be released. And while in this prison, you had to pay for the privilege of your own private room. Otherwise, they throw you into a communal cell, which is not pleasant. Um, so people paid for the privileges of having a nine by nine cell. But there were no, there were no other restrictions, really. Men and women were in the prison together. It was not difficult to bring in the foods that you wanted. People hired in prostitutes. I mean, it was, it wasn't like under the board. It's like, no, we don't care. As long as you were physically here, what you do while you're in here was of no business to anyone. And I'm sure that there was more than a little bit of abuse going on in there in one way or another. Um, so it was kind of an interesting means of, you know, seeing into the, into that particular world that I'd never entertained. Now it makes, kind of makes me want to look into the whole concept of better prisons and the horrible foundations they laid for for-profit prisons that they, for example, still flourish in the United States today. Um, a fascinating portrayal of William Smith, and I highly recommend this. If you are into science and cartography, if you have an interest in geology, if you have an interest in the 19th century, uh, well, actually, when, when Smith was an 18th century man, but he did his, most of his work in the 19th century, um, 19th century foundations of science and as as the true concepts of how we view the world in a structured manner this is a fascinating book it is not perfect um there was one aspect about this that i found both uncomfortable historically and i found it uncomfortable um, because i don't think winchester handled the topic very well that is the topic of william smith's wife mary he didn't get a lot of details about the woman. And in fact, the first time she's ever mentioned in his, his extensive um, personal diaries was as initials. And it was only kind of an offhand comment that, that you reading the diaries discovered that he'd gotten married. Um, they never had children. Um, and the closest he ever came to like being, like being a parent was helping to, rate, to helping to train his nephew who went on to becoming a very important member of the geological community himself. Um, in fact, I believe he became the president of the Geological Society in Britain at, at, at one point in his life. Um, but Mary, from the description of what he himself gave, William Smith, and from the way that Winchester has written about her, she suffered from mental illness, serious, serious mental illness. Um, quite likely anxiety and depression, um, and maybe even deeper issues than that. And she was not handled kindly. Now that people in the era that she lived, like the 18th, like the, the book covering these sections of her life was 1830s, um, say for example, talked about that she had, was hysteric or maybe described as a nymphomaniac, um, is one thing. Winchester describes her that way. Winchester is almost as cruel to this woman as were the contemporaries that she lived with. And I can almost, I cannot forgive how they treated this woman in the past, but I understand that the foundations of mental health that exist is the way we understand them now. And people with mental illness were not well treated, women were not treat, well, well treated, and women with mental illness were treated even more poorly. So it's a, it was an absolute crap fest when it came to that. So I understand even if I do not excuse it. But Winchester knows better. Winchester lives in the modern world. And he, he treats her very poorly, in my opinion. He does not give her the kindness that she deserved. He does not seem to understand 
what mental illness is or how to write about it in a kind, reasoned manner. And Winchester comes off as really treating her poorly. Because the reality is, is a woman, um, even in the modern era, in the 20th century, that has a sex drive just equivalent to a, a man of her own cohort could have been viewed as a nymphomaniac. Why? Because women weren't supposed to have sexual interest. I mean, that's, that's a concept that even today is wrestled with in the modern era. Women expressing that. So imagine how difficult it was for a woman who maybe was trying to express her sexual desires in the 1830s. Um, but he repeatedly, the, the, the author, Adam Smith, just treat this woman very badly, in my opinion, and it left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, I've come to expect better. Um, the man is, Winchester is an excellent author. I've read three of his books. All of them are good. He knows how to do his research, and I think he could have done a better job when it comes to treating um, mental illness, um, the way women were treated at the time, and with the way women with mental illness are treated, which, again, is an intersection of two different things. Here's that word again, intersection. Um, so, again, if you like science, if you like history, if you like cartography, this is a book that I think you would definitely enjoy reading. I did. Um, I am very happy that I picked it up, and I may go and see if I can what else Winchester has written because apparently I really like this guy's style.